Hello everybody, Luke Schulte, Field of Grounds for Bex Hybrids. It's getting to be that time of the year, second half of August, when oftentimes some of our more aggressive soybean leaf diseases tend to manifest themselves. Diseases like brown stem rot or sudden death syndrome, even cercospora. This is the time of the year when they tend to start showing a lot more prevalent. However, just like the year that's been filled full of abnormalities or uncommon weather patterns and cycles, we're also seeing some less common soybean leaf diseases present within the fields as well. One of those diseases is what's called soybean vein necrosis. Now this is a virus that's actually vectored by a small insect called thrips. They're very small, tough to identify, but they tend to feed on the lower side of the soybean leaf and they vector soybean vein necrosis. However, because this particular disease is not fungal based, our R3 fungicide applications that we made to soybeans are also not impactful at diminishing the presence of soybean vein necrosis within our fields. But because this is a disease that we don't see on an annual basis, it oftentimes, at least from an identification standpoint, can be confused with diseases, particularly with brown stem rot or sudden death syndrome, which tend to look the same above ground. But one of the keys or the key to identifying whether you have soybean vein necrosis or brown stem sudden death is identifying where does the yellowing begin? Just like the name soybean vein necrosis, the yellowing of this particular disease begins by traveling the veins themselves. And then eventually that yellowing migrates to the surrounding tissue. That yellowing turns to more of a browning, more of a, even of a red browning discoloration in necrotic tissue. Whereas sudden death syndrome or brown stem rot, which looked the same above ground, is more of a smattering or that, that random yellowing, but it occurs between the leaf veins initially. Another differentiator between soybean vein necrosis and brown stem or sudden death syndrome is also the backside of the leaf. If you flip the leaves over that are infected of soybean vein necrosis, the veins themselves oftentimes are more of a black or brown discoloration. So just some things to look for because soybean vein necrosis is not something we see on an annual basis. So it's sometimes identifying it can be very difficult when we don't see it as commonly as other diseases. Now, the good news is while there's still research being conducted and more research does need to be conducted to fully understand soybean vein necrosis, it's not believed to be highly yield impactful. So that's the good news as you start to see it in the field. Now, if you like agronomy, you're really gonna enjoy Technology Days. I'd ask you or invite you to join us at Technology Days this week, August 22nd through 24th, Thursday through Saturday. We'll discuss a variety of agronomic topics. In fact, you'll struggle to see it all in one day, but we'll look at things that, that are pretty common like nitrogen, but how can we get better with our current nitrogen practices? Perhaps depth matters. Maybe we apply more up front. Maybe we apply more at a later growth stage. We're gonna look at fungicide applications whether it be Zyway or what can we tweak to our current fungicide applications to make them more impactful and hopefully boost profitability. And then we'll also look at new technologies like root architecture. Jim Schwartz, our Director of PFR and Agronomy and Research, is gonna unveil what we've learned thus far within the two years of our Root Reveal project, which is a project that's uh, characterizing root architecture, not only volume, but also the root architecture within each and every one of the hybrids that we sell at Vex Hybrids and does fertility or how we apply that fertility, whether it's two by two or banded versus broadcast, does it play a more significant impact with certain hybrids? Does low productivity soils impact certain hybrids more? Do some hybrids uh, fit our higher productive soils better? How do we characterize hybrids better so that way we, we can improve our batting average as we introduce new products? So that's just a few of the topics that we'll discuss at this year's Technology Days. If you like agronomy, please join us. Hope to see you there.